Hey guys, Nick Espinosa, your chief security fanatic here. <clears throat> and today we're actually going to be talking about a government tracking human beings. And we're not necessarily going to be talking about the United States or China or Iran or North Korea or the European Union even, or any country that you could possibly think of that would be typically tracking humans to the nth degree. We're actually going to be talking about Canada. Yes, Canada, one of the most politest places on earth. I should know, I have a ton of relatives there and they're all awesome and polite and you guys might be watching, so hello, but that is obviously not what we are talking about. We are talking about Canada surveilling its citizens. Now here's what's going on, and this reporting is coming from Motherboard by Vice News. Now, Canadian authorities such as police, social services, health workers, they are actually using shared databases to track the behavior of what they consider vulnerable people. Now, this includes um, minors and also people that are homeless. Now, here's the thing. Basically, this database, according to, to Vice and documents that they obtain, essentially has little to no oversight whatsoever and how that is being used and shared across all of these different agencies in Canada. And most of the time, it's not with consent. So in other words, you don't necessarily know that you are being put into a database and therefore you are not giving your consent to do that. You're not, you're not being asked if you can, not to mention the fact they're tracking minors like this with very little oversight and no consent. Now, the documents that were contained by Motherboard um, are come from the, um, and I've got notes here, Ontario's Ministry of Community Safety and Correctional Services. Um, and so basically, they're showing at least two provinces, Ontario and Saskatchewan, are maintaining a risk-driven tracking database that is used to amass highly sensitive information about people's lives. So some of the information that they're collecting here is whether the person is using drugs, whether they've been a victim of an assault, whether they live in what is quote unquote a negative neighborhood. And that is a very interesting term because are we classifying a group of people in a neighborhood, in a negative neighborhood, specifically because where they're living, you know, due to geography. You could be the nicest person in the world, the most clean cut, you know, pay your taxes person. And if you're living in a negative neighborhood, how does that impact you? Now, this risk-driven tracking database, or RTD, is actually part, part of a collaborative approach um, to policing uh, that Canada has created, and it is called the hub model. So basically, it's, it's pairing up cops, uh, school staff, social workers, healthcare workers, and the provincial government to basically track and monitor these people, um, I, I, I'm assuming under the assumption of giving them help when they need. Now, this information is basically for vulnerable at-risk people that I've mentioned, um, and these are the people that have the highest potential, they say, of becoming criminals or victims of harm, and so they're tracking them. Um, now, it's interesting because it says right here, and I quote, um, uh, the person is added to the database when a person is, is being evaluated for a rapid intervention intended to lower their risk levels. Interventions can range from a door knock in a chat to forced hospitalization or arrest. And so basically, without any real oversight and without your consent, you're being added to this because they consider you at risk for either criminal behavior or harm. Uh, harm could come to you as a civilian in some way, shape, or form. So that is, I, I think, a very interesting, interesting situation. Now, we have what I would presume a government that is attempting to do what it considers the best for its citizens, but at what cost? Are we balancing uh, too little privacy here for that? Should we have the consent? I mean, what if you are fals falsely tagged into this database? Is that a black mark on you in Canada for the rest of your life or for an extended period, even though it shouldn't be? I mean, how, what does that look like? You know, and if I'm taking this to the extreme degree, imagine if you got put onto some kind of criminal offense registry, like a sex offender registry or something like that, and you're not actually a criminal. What if that is a snafu and a mistake? And now anytime somebody searches you, they see that you are some kind of predator in the neighborhood. I don't know necessarily if it's going that far in Canada, but with all these different agencies um, collaborating and sharing data and information with virtually no oversight, that is potential for harm. That is potential for malfeasance as well. This is why we have compliance laws for data security and information control. So take that for what it's worth. But that is what Canada is doing for its, uh, its citizens that it considers vulnerable. So there you go. And please like, share, follow me here on Facebook and Twitter at Nick AESP. And as always, stay safe and stay online. Thanks, guys.